Hi, I'm Bill Mobley and this is Neurosciences Connections, a production of the Department of Neurosciences here at UCSD. I'm very pleased to be uh, meeting today with Larry Goldstein, a new member of our department, though a longtime faculty member here at UCSD. Uh, Larry is one of the uh, architects, really, of Proposition 71, uh, an initiative that made it possible here in California, rather uniquely, uh, to create an effort in understanding and using stem cells to understand, as I mentioned, and treat human disease. And so, Larry, welcome to the show, and tell us a bit about what's going on and, uh, and the excitement that I know you feel about the future of stem cell science. Well, I think, you know, the thing that makes stem cells so exciting in neuroscience and neurology research is that they give us an entirely new way of trying to solve problems in biology and in human disease that we never had before. And, you know, we're at the beginning of a very long journey. It's going to take us several years, perhaps more, to make the kinds of advances we want to make for patients. But the early years of this revolution in biology are giving us some very promising leads and handles that we just never had before. Yeah. You know, one of the things that the viewers may not know is the ability using cells that are derived from human skin, for example, to build uh, human neurons, really, to put in our hands the very tissues that we want to treat. Yeah. No, it's, it's a very exciting development. And the thing that makes it so special is that, on the one hand, we can use these stem cell methods that we never had before to make human neurons mm -hmm. on a daily basis in my lab as opposed to doing the unthinkable which would be to ask you bill for a donation of human neurons whenever we need to do an experiment that's clearly not going to happen yeah. but what's really neat about the technology is we can take your skin cells make them into effectively your neurons in a dish and try to use those neurons to understand the unique aspects of bill mobley's brain by studying your special neurons in a dish and perhaps someday transplanting them or just using them to test drugs to treat whatever diseases you may develop. It's I think, extraordinary. Yeah, and, and, and so mentioning the treatment side is important because not only would you have neurons that reflect a person's genotype, a patient's genotype, in other words, their genetic makeup. Their unique genetic makeup. Exactly. exactly. That's right. But you'd have cells that would hopefully behave in a dish, as you say, uh, in a way that would allow you to test the efficacy of treatments that you might propose. Absolutely. So suppose that we had Alzheimer disease neurons in a dish and they exhibit, as we've observed, the misbehavior that is typical of Al Alzheimer disease brain cells. Well, what we've started doing and what we can continue to do in the future is use this brand new way of testing drugs for Alzheimer's disease, human Alzheimer's disease, not mouse, not chimpanzee, not some other organism, and test those drugs for their ability to have an effect and also to make sure that they're not toxic. It's, it's a revolutionary kind of technology. Sounds exciting. I, I think the press can distort things a little bit. And, and you know, I think the popular press sometimes um, uh, puts stem cells forward as the cure of the present almost. In other words, all these disorders are just going to magically go away because we have stem cells. What do you say to people that, that complain about the hype around yeah. stem well, cells? I'll, first of all, I'll defend my friends in the press. I think mostly they do get it right. But I think everybody, myself included, we desperately want these new treatments to arrive as rapidly as possible because even scientists and members of the press have family members and friends who have these terrible diseases that we can't currently treat. But it's true. We're at the beginning of a journey. It's so easy to go to a blackboard and say, as John Kennedy did, go to moon, draw a little picture of the earth and the moon and draw an arrow and it makes it seem as though it's going to be really easy to get there. But it took 10 years of engineering work and scientific challenges but that's what you need to take the really good idea and turn it into reality. So we're working hard right now to bring those treatments to us as rapidly as possible. But yes, it will take years. It's hard work, but we will get it done. Is it fair to say that UCSD is an important part of the moonshot team for these neurological disorders? Absolutely. I mean, this is one of UC San Diego and our neighbors in La Jolla represent one of the best neuroscience and neurology communities in the world. The reason people like me came here and the reason we stay here is because the intellectual capital, the colleagues to work with, the clinicians who will someday deliver what we discover in the labs to treatment, these people are fantastic and they work together. 
The thing that's really important to remember is there's a popular idea of the scientist from the 17th century working alone in a dark room at the top of a tower or something like that. That's not how modern science works. You need teams of really smart people with different expertise working together to solve the most intractable problems in human disease. And that kind of teamwork exists almost uniquely in this community. Larry, you're a leader. We thank you for thank your you. leadership and for your terrific work. Thanks, Thanks very thank much. You,